Welcome everyone to another Wednesday night. The fundamentals to gain inner peace with your host, Coach Menachem Bernfeld. And let's not forget what are we looking for? Inner peace. That doesn't mean everything is going to be a cherry on the pie. We do have things going on. We all have our things. But while we go through our challenges, we can slowly come to a place where we can slow down a little bit and still be okay so that we can have the strength to continue and to build from a healthy place. So last week we discussed self-care. We discussed um, one of the six areas in our life, physical, physical. Sorry. The physical area in our life to see what we can do. And tonight we're going to go into a little bit more psychological, mental, to see what could help us with a little bit of self-care. We'll focus on that area. But before we start, let's do what we do every week. Take a deep breath. Let's get grounded. And try to relax a little bit. This might be the only time you stop. I hope it's not. I hope you take some time off other than Wednesday night. But I know a lot of people are just so busy and they would love to take off. So this is a start. This itself that you're here tonight, taking some time for yourself. So you got to practice a little bit of what we talk, just to relax a little bit, take it easy. So let's get grounded. Let's become aware of where we are, how we feel, what's, what did our day look like? Become aware of where we are physically, in the room where we are, or maybe listening to the recording and driving. And then become aware of how you feel internally, inside. We all have things, and sometimes it can be stress that we're not even aware of. So we can take a deep breath, breath put your two feet on the ground, feel whatever tension, whatever feelings you have in your body. Take a deep breath and breathe in and out. If you feel any tension in your body, take a deep breath into that area and let it out with your breath. Beautiful. Let your, your jaws relax, let your shoulders relax, let your stomach relax. And before we continue, I just want to wondering if you've done anything, any self-care. Or could be you do self-care every day, which is amazing. You can let me know in the chat what are the things that you picked up or what are the things that you that you do for self-care. You can start with the physical ideas that we discussed last week. We discussed exercise, becoming aware of getting enough sleep, our eating habits, drinking habits, just making sure we're taking care of ourselves. Because if we're not, who's going to take care of us? Getting enough water, enough sleep. Do we take a break when we feel we need to rest? Those are the small things that we can do. Or maybe something bigger, get a massage.
taking care of whatever we need to. Beautiful, some people are sharing about exercise. Again, remember, it doesn't have to be at the gym for a full hour. It could be taking five minutes walk. Even if it's a little bit, we discuss taking a break every hour at work. If you're sitting at a chair for many hours, try to get up every hour just for two minutes and do some movement, shake your body, which helps. Tonight, we're gonna to discuss a little bit psychological, which is a little bit mental to help us. There are some ideas that overlap. For example, exercise. It helps us physically. And doing exercise, it helps with stress. And you feel better afterwards. You can feel calm. So it helps with psychological and mental also. So there are a few things that overlap, which is beautiful. And all of this is basically self-care, things that we need, things that make us feel better. Small things, because if we focus on the big things, it doesn't always last. Small things that we can put into our routine, those things could stick. If it's something small, in the morning, you take a cup of water, a drink, or you take a, a walk, maybe you take the steps instead of the elevator. Small things that you can put into your routine, That's those are the things that stick. But if you decide to go to the gym five days a week, well, I don't know how long that's gonna last. If you decide to do big things, some people get a treadmill. And it's also a question, how long does it last? So everything is beautiful, but the main thing is we have to make sure that we're actually doing it, not that it's the concept. So it's important to become aware of when you hear the ideas, whether it's here tonight with me, is it something that you try to implement or it just stays in the concept and haven't done it yet, which is okay, become aware of that. And if you do do anything already, become aware of that, write it down and pat yourself on the back. Say, yes, I do walk, I do exercise. I do to take care of myself, whatever I need, whatever it is. So psychological and mental. One example is to practice mindfulness or meditation. It doesn't have to be something big. It could be five minutes. We discussed it a lot over here. Just to stop, mindful is to stop and see where am I. How do I feel? And just stay there. Deep breathing can help. You feel much better afterwards. Sleeping is also something that overlaps, but getting enough sleep, it could help with our mental health, with our moods. It gives us that strength that we need for the day. So whether it's physical or it's psychological or mental. Another idea is setting boundaries. It's learning how to say no. It could be hard for many people and they might be helping the world out there. But to be able to say, wait a second, what do I need for my health? for my mental health, what breaks do I need? And I'm not always available. And then we might feel guilty because if somebody asks me for a favor, I, I always wanna be there for them. But to set boundaries, it says, wait a second, you are a person too, you need to take care of yourself. And no, it's not selfish because the only way you'll be able to give, be there for others, is if you know how to say no, when you need to give for yourself first so that you can be there. So that's setting boundaries, whether it's at work, coworkers, maybe they throw everything at you and you have to do it, you feel bad, it's not your job, but you're doing it anyways. To say, I'm sorry, I won't be able to do this. That's it. But they're gonna be upset. They're not gonna like me. 
take a deep breath, you're okay. But isn't it better if I do everything they throw on me, all the jobs? Shouldn't I continue doing it? They'll love me and they'll say I do everything. Well, yeah, it might sound good for a week, two, or a month or two, but afterwards you will get burnt out. So for you to be in a healthy state, we need to learn how to set some boundaries. Let me read you a list. Just I'm going to read it a little bit fast, but just think of things that you do or something that you would love to do. So taking some time for self-reflection, time to think, maybe going to therapy, talking to someone, journaling, becoming self-aware, sensory engagements, like doing activities that have the five senses, whether it's a smell, a feeling, walking outside, listening to the birds, aromatherapy, drawing, painting, or a hobby, relax in the sun, garden, read a self-help book, join a support group, think about your positive qualities, write them down. And another interesting one is, is practicing to ask and receive help. So just become aware. If there's anything that you do do already, you can share it in the chat. Let me know. And if it's something that you would love to do, also it's, a, it's good to become aware. I would love to paint if I would have time. I just don't have time. I would love to take a walk. I would love to draw. I'd love to do any hobby, play a musical instrument or something. All of these ideas help for our mental health to take some time off and just do things that we like, that we enjoy. And it could be hard for many. And I'm aware of that. First of all, we don't have time. Like we discussed many times, we're very, very busy. Question is why we can't stop and take a few minutes off. But we're very busy. And number two, talk about thinking of your positive qualities. For many people, it's hard to write down a list of their positive quality. I'm actually dealing with a 12 year old, with a 12 year old boy who cannot come up with any positive qualities. And when I would bring it, show, show him, tell him about his qualities, he would look at me like I'm crazy. So we're not going to discuss where this comes from, but there are people out there who don't really believe that they have anything positive. And that's a problem because we all have. We all have positive qualities, but sometimes our mind doesn't let us see it. In order to be healthy, to continue, to grow, we need to start somewhere. We need to have at least one and we have much more, but at least one to walk around feeling like a zero, like a nothing, like a failure is a problem. Now, if, if, if anything came up that you would love to do, write it down. Just becoming aware that if I would have a few minutes a day to do something, I would love to take a walk. I would love to paint. I would love to learn an instrument. Just write it down. So you bring it closer to you, knowing who you are, how you feel, what are your wants and your needs, even though you might not be able to do it right now, but at least become aware if I would be able to, if I would have time, I would love to do it. And then eventually down the road, after learning how we can slow down, take a break, we can slowly take some steps towards those things that we love to do. And remember, 
you think it's selfish or I don't really need it. This is called mental health. To help us be healthy, to, to be in a healthy state so we can be in a healthy state for ourselves and for those around us. And that's another thing to remember. Many people will tell me, I'm fine. I don't need it. Now, what we have to remember is that we're human. And human beings need self-care. We all need to be understood. We need to take off, take some time for ourselves. Whether you're going through real struggles or just life, to stay alive, to be alive, is to understand yourself, what you need, and then be able to do those things. But even more important, if you can't do it to yourself, if you think you don't need it, I'm fine, I'm good. So that means you're not really in touch. Then it's very hard for you to be there for those around you, whether it's your spouse, your kids, to really be able to understand them, be able to relate to them, to help them develop that they should be in touch in tune to their wants and needs so that they can go through life in a healthy manner. The only way we can do it is if we're aware of it, we understand it, and it starts with ourselves. This is something that it takes time for people to hear this, but uh, I have to stress it again and again. Self-care is something that we all need. Most of us take care of ourselves already. Sometimes we're not aware of it. Sometimes we're not conscious. We don't stop to think, you know, I deserve to sit down and relax. I deserve a cup of coffee. Sometimes it's part of our routine that we, we're not aware, we're not mindful of what we do. So it's important to become mindful of these things that we do. And then it, well, then it shifts from something that you did till now, mindlessness. You weren't aware of it. You just did it. And now you're slowing down and you're telling yourself you deserve and you're giving it to yourself. Whatever it is, whether, whether it's that five-minute walk, walking to work, taking that cup of coffee. But again, whatever that small step, that small thing that you're doing, it could be you did it before, but to be mindful about it, that brings it into that idea of becoming aware of it so that we're in tune. Like I shared last week, exercise. For those who uh, were cleaning the hotels, they were doing the same thing. But one group was aware. They, they were mindful while they were walking back and forth that this is exercise. So just becoming aware, it helps you become in touch. And it, pro it probably makes you feel much better because at the end of the day, you feel, wow, I did exercise. So yes, so the people around us need it, our kids for sure, so that they can grow, grow, grow up, listen to these recordings and say, Baruch Hashem, my parents were there for me. They were able to give me, help me understand myself, to be in touch. And the only way to do that is if us adults, the parents, the adult in the room, could become aware of it, could become in touch for ourselves. We can give it to, could give it to others. We could help them understand it. Not that we're going to preach this to them, but we can be there for them. I just want to end with one thing that I mentioned last week but it was really for the last minute, and then we left, and I hope you were able to continue your week. The idea of after doing that five-minute exercise, after doing that small thing of self-help, to pat yourself on the back and say, wow, I did it, and to say, I liked it, I enjoyed it, even though it could be you didn't. 
So let's talk about doing five minute exercise. If you're gonna decide, you know what, I need exercise and you're gonna start doing those five minutes. If afterwards you think to yourself, nah, I don't feel better. It's not working. It's not making a change. What do I need this for? So that's the negative voice in your head. If you're aware of those voices, and if that's the loud voice, then obviously you might do it again or three or four times, but after a while, you're probably going to stop because there's somebody standing on the side of you saying, why in the world are you doing something that makes no sense? It's not working. So I'm here to tell you, to tell yourself that it's working and you love it because it, it, in the long run, you will see a difference and you will love it, even though now you might be, not be able to see it. It could be with losing weight also. You do five minute exercise. Am I gonna lose weight five minute exercise, really? So it's, that, it's like the water on the rock by Rabbi Kiva. If you do it every day, it will make a difference. But how am I gonna make sure that I'm gonna do this consistently to put it in my routine and do it? It's only if after I've done it, I tell myself, Great job, you did it, and I like it, and I'm gonna do it again. That's the positive voice. We have to make the volume higher on the positive voices, because if the negative voice is louder, that's what's gonna control. So that's what I mentioned last time, last week before we left, that even if you think it's not true, tell yourself that you like it. Tell yourself it's working. Tell yourself you feel much better. Say, wow, I feel so good. And then that voice is going to say, you're a liar. It's not true. Say, it's, I'm fine. I'm okay. It feels good. I'm doing it. This is what I want to do. And it makes a difference. And slowly, the positive affirmation, slowly that will be louder and it will make a difference. You will feel better. So that's the only way to do it. So that's why I wouldn't tell yourself to lie. But in the long run, the only way you can continue is if you see the results if you feel good and you tell yourself you like it and you feel good about it, and then eventually you will like it and feel good about it. So let's end with a few affirmations that's going to help us to take care of ourselves in all areas. And hopefully next week we'll continue into the other areas, whether it's spiritual um, see what we need for self-care. But for now, let's take a deep breath. You can listen to my voice. You can say it with yourself loud and clear and let it go in. So here we go. I am worthy of self-care and self-compassion. I trust in my ability to cope with stress and overcome challenges. I am in control of my thoughts and emotions, and I choose to focus on the positive. I'm surrounded by supportive people, and I appreciate the love and care they give me. I am grateful for my strength and capabilities, and I trust in my ability to improve. I choose to live in the present moment and focus on what I can control. I am open to learning new ways to take care of myself and improve my mental well being. I am in charge of my own happiness and I'm capable of creating a fulfilling life. I am worthy of forgiveness, and I practice self-forgiveness. I trust in my inner wisdom, and I believe in my own strength and resilience. Take a deep breath, and let it in. Become aware of how you feel. Sometimes it's hard to believe these things. Just become aware. So that's it for tonight. See what you can pick up, some small ideas. Ask yourself, 
what's something small that I can implement? What's something small that I can do? Write it down and try to do it a few times. Doesn't have to be perfect. And now you can send in your questions. If anything came up, send them into the chat. We'll spend two minutes to try to answer your questions. Beautiful, we have people that are practicing to learn an instrument. Don't spend too much time because then you, you're only gonna do it once a year. If you spend less time, you can do it a little bit every week. Great question, somebody's asking if you can paint or color with your grandchildren, for sure. First of all, I wonder what it looks like when you do it yourself. Sometimes it's easier to do it with them because you believe that they like it, even though you might not, but they do. But become aware of how you feel. You might enjoy it, and maybe you can start doing it for a few minutes, even without them. I could send these affirmations in the email. If you get the email every week, I could send them there. Um, if you don't, please send me an email, coachmanachim at gmail.com and tell me you wanna to subscribe to the email list and we'll put you on so you can get the affirmations. Many people shared that they're doing exercise. Taking some time off, rest, beautiful. So that's about it. So if you enjoy tonight and you like the ideas, try to take it from the concept and try to apply it. Something small that you can put into your day and you will feel a difference. For now, I would like to thank you all for joining and thank yourself for taking some time off and try to do it more than once a week. Just be there for yourself, give yourself what you need so that you have the strength to continue and be able to be there for yourself and the people around you. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you. Great week. Thank you. Thank you very much. Shabbat shalom, thank you. Excellent, thank you. <laughs>